Hi, on this problem right here, we're talking about Amazon Alexa. Raise your hand if you have one of those. That's fun. And I also wanted to tell you, it's kind of just a technical question, trying out an equation here. Sheeny gave us some proportionality to one over r squared. This font is unfortunate, although very good for jokes, but the font is unfortunate because uh, ones look like eyes. I'm sorry, not, but those. See that? That's a one, that's a one, that's a one, that's an I. The I is a really high up thing. So this is intensity, and it actually is power divided by four pi r square. I can't get in the right place here, sorry. If you measure the intensity of your Amazon Echo, playing your jam from 2.0 meters away as blah 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 watts per square meter, that's what intensity is, right? That's its units because power is in watts and this stuff down here is some area, probably the surface area of a sphere because as I blow a bubble, the bubble material gets thinner and thinner and thinner until it pops. So that's reasonable. Uh, I guess what I'm wondering is what is the output power of the speaker? And you'll find that actually sound is incredibly low power. There's not a lot of energy contained in sound, which means that you can um, uh, make little speakers that you can put inside of your ears and you can give them tiny little weensy rechargeable batteries and they can work for six hours between charges. So that might be nice. if. For instance, you weren't able to connect wires to the source of your music. Question 18.2 is about intensity. Oh, it refers back to the previous problem. So let's make sure that you've written down the values from the previous problem. Just click back a little bit and find out what the previous problem numbers were. We're going to use them for 18.3 also. Pay attention. Um, the question is, what intensity would you measure if you went 1.0 meters away from her? That means you're getting, um, let's see, you're getting, oh, you're getting closer. You're getting closer to her. You would measure more intensity or less intensity or is intensity the constant here? I don't know. Think about that for a little bit and then do the calculation. Thank you very much. You have cut the distance in half. Um, if Alexa could perfectly digest Snickers, I heard that this is an update that Amazon is working on where you just insert a Snicker into the bottom and Alexa then can be cordless. How long could she play at the volume that you used in the first problem? This is a time question and uh, in order to emphasize to you just how low, um, how, how um, little energy uh, sound is. Oh, you'll need to know a couple other things. One, on the back of the Snickers bar, the uh, in America at least, we cite our Snickers bars in calories with a capital C, but that's a thousand calories. It's called a food calorie. The capital C is a kilocalorie. Of course, if you're lucky enough to live in Europe, then you are familiar with kilojoules, and this will be a much simpler question for you. But in America, you need to know that 4.186 Calories, I mean actual calories, not food calories, is equal to one joule. So if you have a food calorie, then uh, you have 4,186 joules, which might be jarring if you consider exactly how much energy is inside the Snickers that you want to eat. Wow. Maybe that's why they're so good. And they really satisfy. You're 1.0 meters away from your alarm, which is a piercing 77 decibels at that distance. That's um, fairly close to an alarm, but reasonable, and that's pretty loud. It might interrupt your sleep. If you tape it to your hacked Roomba, which you've programmed to, uh, when the alarm rings, drive away from you as far as it can go, how far does the little robot need to go in order to make the alarm sound like nothing to you? Uh, it would go bother somebody somewhere away. You might be surprised by this result. Do not be afraid. Post your answer in the comment. Like and subscribe! Right, Annalise? Right. Like and subscribe. Donate money to me. Go fund me. Go fund me. I have a go. <laughs> I do. I actually have a GoFundMe page. You could try it out. Just give me 57 cents or something. See if that works out for you. It might make you feel like you have done a good turn for the day, and you probably won't notice at the end of the day that you've given me 57 cents. But if a thousand people do it, I'd notice. What would happen to the frequency you hear if the ambulance approaches you at the speed of sound? Remember the ambulance that Shinny had there? She had an ambulance that was going towards you, and that made the frequency increase, right? So the question is, the ambulance is moving towards you at the speed of sound. What frequency do you hear? That's the question. The next question is more of a conceptual question. If you move toward a stationary ambulance, 
is the increase in pitch exactly the same as when it moved towards you? So what I'm saying is, if this is me, and this is an ambulance, and I go like that, is it the same as the ambulance going like that? Because it certainly seems that way by symmetry. You, look, I use my magic word right here, symmetry of the universe. But um, uh, there's a hint, and the hint is, what happens if you move forward? <laughs> what happens if you move toward it faster than the speed of sound? So um, good luck, because you're going to ultimately um, discover that there's something very interesting at play here. And uh, what is the nature of reality? Really?